So everybody, please uh, fill the seats and let's get started. So, welcome everybody, skiers and snowboarders, to this keynote presentation series that we do indoors. There was one out outdoors yesterday, so we'll do today, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. My name is Uffe, I will be hosting these, these sessions and uh, actually talking to people on the lifts today, meeting a lot of new friends, new instructor friends from different parts of the world. There's one question at least that seems to be pretty common, and that's uh, what do I do in the summertime? A lot of people do ski instruction in the wintertime, but they don't really have something connected to that to do in the summertime. So work becomes periodical and not year round. And ski school managers have the same sort of challenge. How do I retain my best people so I don't just keep them for one, two years and then lose them because they go on to something else? And, and this question is something that Swiss Snow Sports and the Swiss Ski School have put a lot of effort into. And therefore, it's my pleasure to introduce Alex, Alex Takwalder and, and Kili, Kili Weibel from, from the Swiss Ski School, both present and former demo members, and you guys are working on a project for how to really make ski instructor or screen instruction a full year job. So please, help me welcome Kili and Alex. So, hello everybody, and thank you Uffe for this nice presentation. Thank you Levi and Interski for uh, organizing such a great event and that we can share our passion, passion in such a beautiful environment. In the next 35 to 45 minutes, we will talk about sharing our passion and the experience for our clients, which leads out of that. But we will also leave winter sports for a moment in order to show our vision how the ski school industry in Switzerland could look in the future. Me and Kelly. We will lead you through the presentation and uh, I will talk a little bit more about the strategic point of view as a former ski school director but also as a former demo team member and as a board member of Swiss Snow Sports. Kili will afterwards talk a little bit more about the operative impact of these strategic decisions. So the points we're going to talk about is like why do we think about changing our business models in the ski schools. What is the strategy behind it? <clears throat> what is the philosophy which leads out of this strategy? What are our goals? How are we going to implement the products in our ski school? And maybe also a little bit, what is the vision behind it for Swiss snow sports on the educational side? So why? First of all, we need to say things really clear. Our goal is not to focus too much on summer. As a snow sports umbrella association, it would be a little bit the wrong signs to communicate that we will do summer activities due to external influences. Winter is still our core business with our core competences, and cold air is what we love to breathe, 
white covered landscapes like we have that here in Levy are the pictures we love to see and snow crystals are the diamonds we dream of. So that's for sure. But also on the economical aspect, summer and winter season are a different pair of shoes in lots of the Swiss um, mountain destinations. Somehow in the winter, the winter industry established a service chain which allows a large amount of players to install a profitable business case. While on the other hand, in the summer, we are still struggling to develop such a similar system. But let's start from the beginning. What was the initial situation? So climate change is a big theme, I think, all over. If I was talking a little bit to one or the other ski instructor the last uh, couple of days, um, we also found out that not every region got touched by that topic the same way. But in Switzerland, the winter season, somehow this winter especially, got shorter, and especially small and lower um, ski areas, they were struggling a lot. They had, <clears throat> they had problems to start the season in the beginning, due to lack of snow. They even had to interrupt the winter season in the middle, or they have now to close a little bit earlier. So the economical aspects, they are changing as well. If we have a look on the cost structure of a ski resort, we have on one side the increasing costs due to higher electricity prices, and we have also to make a big amount of artificial snow, which costs a lot. And on the other side, due to the smaller or shorter season, um, the turnover is decreasing. We also observe a change of society and their needs. Various offer of leisure activities, they have, they have a big impact on our uh, winter business because there is a lot of competition our clients, they wish a little bit more flexibility. If they plan a weekend trip, they do three, four days ahead, they look on the weather forecast, and then they decide whether they're gonna get the car and drive up into a mountain destination or they stay in the village or in the, in the cities and they do something else. And then we have also a need of a sustainable tourism. And especially from the media side, this winter we felt quite a lot of pressure. If we have seen the pictures with white slopes in a green environment, they were picking up that theme and they were writing quite a lot of stuff which raised a little bit the pressure on that side. And we have a little bit in these sort of days, a little bit of an image problem. But then two weeks later, when there is falling snow, everything is gone. So they forget also quite quick. So, in order to keep the customers in our ski school, that's, that's a really high goal of us. Changing situations are asking for a flexible and innovative leadership. In order to be able to do, react on this sort of changing situation, we need flexibility, we need development, we need innovation, we need human resources, but also financial resources. So these pictures is still what we love to do, like shredding some powder turns, shredding the nice groomed slopes like we did today, spend some nice time with friends, but also we love to see kids who, sh who have the same passion that we have and they want to have learned success and that's what we want to see in the future as well. But the reality this year was a little bit different. If you went to Zermatt, for example, who, who is one of the highest ski resorts in Switzerland, five or six weeks ago, crevices were open. The glacier on 3,500 meters, 400 meters, they were re hardly covered by snow. So these were the pictures, you, you know them from this winter. So there was nearly a lack of snow throughout the whole season. And these sort of pictures, they make the whole stuff a little bit difficult.
So also for some of the ski schools, the situation is difficult. We have higher costs. We have a higher amount of administration due to cancelled booking, due to postponed bookings, and the demand of lessons is changing a lot. So we have these bluebird days, vacation periods, good weekends, where all of the people want a lesson, and we, have, we, we can hardly cover the demand. And then two days later, if the weather is bad, no one is showing up, and the instructor has no work. So the problem is that the income for the instructor, also in a shorter season, is a little bit less. And less instructors are also applying for a job the next season. So we want to change, or we want to help our ski schools but we need a clear strategy on that. Our approach is that we want to motivate our ski schools to transform their business model into a 365 days service provider. So I need a little bit your help now. I want to see how this looks all over the world. We have uh, ski schools from all over the world here. So, if you could help me just by raising the hand, you don't even have to speak. Just raise the hand if the, the question is for you. So how many people here in this hall um, are working in a ski school? So nearly, nearly everyone. And who is working in a ski school which provides a summer activity? Already quite a lot. And who? is not a director who has an annual work contract, but is a ski instructor, and you have already an annual working contract. That means you work in that ski school the whole year round. Please raise your hand. I see one person in the <laughs> middle. <laughs> okay, good. So, thanks for that. Um, so, depending on the resort, nature offers different possibilities to create outdoor experiences. So the instructor who work in the, in the winter got different competences. We can use these skills and build new offers. Like that, we help them to grow as instructors, but also as a person the whole year round, and they're going to remain for a longer time a member of this ski school. But also for the ski school on this side, this module gets positive points due to different reasons. So building infrastructure in Switzerland, as you know, Switzerland in general is quite expensive. I mean, if you buy a beer here in Switzerland, it's less expensive. But in, uh, in every other thing, Switzerland is quite expensive. So if you buy or you build infrastructure, um, this costs a lot. If, if you can use the infrastructure 365 days a year, um, you, and you make profit out of it, you have an, a higher ROI, so a higher return on investment. The processes in selling an administration department will get more professional because you keep on developing these processes all year round. And the schools are more flexible. If you have a lack of snow, you got other activities which will cover at least some of the costs. It's not comparable, that's for sure. If you have, over Christmas, New Year, not a group lesson running, but you have to go on a row park, for example, this is not the same. You don't make the same turnover, that's for sure. But it will cover at least some of the costs and gets you a little bit more attractivity in the destination. So we gain on flexibility. If a ski school is open 365 days, you increase also the visibility in a resort. So for a smaller ski resort, this is not a big point because normally you are the only ski school who is working there. But for a bigger um, resort with loads of different ski schools, if you are there the whole year, you have the opinion leaders which know you and you have um, a good network and you have a good visibility. So we want to establish a brand which not only stands for high quality snow sports experiences, but for service and outdoor experiences in general. Our clients will return more frequently and book activities. So as the winter season maybe gets a little bit shorter, ski schools are struggling to hire instructors. Ski schools running activities 365 days 
and you, you offer a really positive prospect to your instructors for an annual working contract. Instructors remain longer, as I said before, in the, in the company, and the team continuity grows. For sure, somehow we need to cover the costs, so we expect also a sales increase. So like I said before already, um, if you don't have a nice bike park up here, I've seen there is a nice bike park. So that it's, it makes no sense if you don't have a nice bike park to uh, build a bike school and offer a lot of, so you need that uh, infrastructure. But there are other possibilities as well. So the Swiss ski schools these days, some of them they have hiking guides, some of them they have um, bike or they sell bike lessons. Some do um, have a rope park, some of them they do kayaking excursions, so um, the possibility is quite big. But if you have a look and, on uh, Swiss Snow Sports as an umbrella association, I think our goal is not to deliver tailor-made programs for all of these sports. I think on the first point, it's important to trigger the creativity of the ski schools. We need to motivate them, we need to support them, we need to, to help them with our network that they bring a little bit, uh, at least one step into the summer activities. And maybe on a, second, on a second step afterwards, we have to offer a platform where the ski school, they can share their experiences among each other and exchange programs. So not everyone has to make the same mistakes, so they can share their uh, best practice. And if we come back a little bit more on that struggle to hire new instructors, in the winter we have quite a lot of instructors who are working for our ski schools. But then in the summer, on the end of the season, they disappear, they're gone. They go back to their, um, uh, to their university, they go back to their regular job, maybe they work in construction, or they do a season abroad, for example, in New Zealand, Argentina, Chile, or Australia. But if we can keep at least some of the instructors, so I think if you have 150 instructors in the winter, you won't keep them in the summer because they don't have work then anymore. But if you have at least seven, eight, nine instructors of them who are working for you also in the summer, you build up a bigger core team and they keep on developing your business also for the winter. They're gonna make you better in the winter as well. And also, a lot of the instructors, they have a good customer connection so you can, you can take that customer connection and spread the summer activities uh, through your customers and they come back and book an activity then. So now I was talking about the strategy and I would like to hand over this thing to <laughs> Kelly and he will explain you a little bit more the operative impact of these thoughts. Hi and welcome from my side. Thank you, Alex, for this uh, detailed background information. Um, as he said, I will talk about the operative side um, and how we implement this project into our um, ski schools. I was allowed to accompany and advise with snow sports for the development and um, implementation of these summer activities. I think living the passion, this is my or our everyday goal. I got the chance to turn my second passion, which is a mountain bike, into my profession five years ago. It means I can work all year round. I'm every day in the nature with nice clients. Whether summer or winter, these are the words behind our teaching philosophy in Switzerland. We want to create not only great experience, we want to create magic moments. Always try our best that the guests can improve their skills and get a learning success. Safety always is our main goal. If we can combine these things, the instructors and clients will have fun and come back 
again. Our goal as an association, as a Swiss ski school or, or as an instructor, we want returning client all year round. Our goal is to have attractive prospects, as Alex said before, employees can work for one company all year round, gives you a kind of a safety. Companies can develop their products, can make sale increase and get a bigger and stronger core team to develop the ski schools. And then creating matching offers the whole year for everyone. The stakeholder ex expectations we put here, we put it into three parts, clients, staff and ski school. Everything we do, we do or offer uh, as a service should benefit the customer. The advantage for our Swiss ski schools, they have a year-round development with a strong core team. The staff has year-round year contracts, which raises the quality of the services. The schools have higher visibility and can make flexible service offerings. Our employees can have a versatile work content, which helps for the motivation. And the client, clients have one distribution partner and can use different experience the whole year round. Now, the realization or implementation. Um, Alex showed us a quick overview with different options before and here an example with mountain bike. Here we got two products. Do you ever heard about Swiss Snow League, can you raise your hands? A few, the Swiss guys, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you something about the Swiss Snow League. Um, this is here on the left side, Swiss Snow League. This is our successful program, learning program um, in the disciplines ski and snowboard. We work since 2002 um, in all Swiss ski schools with this learning program. It contains different levels. In each level, you should reach the learning goals by the end of the week. You can see the color from green to black or from beginner to expert. Here on the left side of it, this is the way which the skiers do. And here on the left side, at uh, the right side, this is the, the, way, uh, the snowboard the way up to the expert. You can do both things and you get the golden snow crack and then you're able to do everything, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the, to the right side. In the past, we developed and a comparable product called Kids Bike League. It's also in terms of color, from beginner to expert. Our goal is to introduce the children to mountain bike in a playful way. And the lessons are as attractive as possible. Other than the Swiss Snow League, it is, it is easier to divide the groups by age and not by technical ability. Kids can join from three years old to 15 years they can, they can participate with a like a bike or uh, a normal bicycle, which is really cute. If you can see um, the three years old kids, they're really fast, so faster than on the skis. So you have to be really um, take care about it. Otherwise they are gone. <laughs> Here, a few numbers, how we operate during the winter. I, as I said, we started the Swiss Snow League 2002. We got uh, already two updates, 2006, 2014, and we will, we will do an update um, in the future. We have 151 Swiss ski schools 
who are operating the whole winter. We have approximately 3. Point, or we sell approximately 3.2 million lessons per winter and have 3,500 members. We educate approximately 2,300 instructors per year. So, big numbers for a very small country. <laughs> The summer business is growing. Here are some facts. We start, or the start of the Kids Bike League was in the Lenzerheide Bike School at 2010. Since then, in two, between 2018 and 2021, there were seven schools who are working with Kids Bike League. Last summer, 2022, Swiss Snow Sports, our um, umbrella association, took the takeover um, for the license, and now we can work with the Swiss, uh, with the Kids Bike League, um, and give the license to the Swiss ski schools. And you can see, next summer, 2023, we already have 28 licenses and um, ski schools who use the product. Um, in general, we have. 84, 48, <laughs> 48 Swiss ski schools uh, with summer activity. It means 365 days um, of experience. For us, it is important to cover almost every part in Switzerland. The big advantage from the network of the 150 Swiss ski schools is that we can cover no, with no matter with no matter which activity, nearly the whole country. Requirements from the staff. Maybe you know a lot of things about snow sports instructors. What a snow, no, snow sports instructor should bring or can develop throughout experience. First, we need passion. Then, we need social skills. We need to understand how to create a great lesson or structure a great lesson. We need to have a nice personality and a high motivation, and the high motivation is required every day. Of course, sports competence is the key to our lesson in any sport. So, that's the mountain bike guide. As you can see, it's exactly the same. <laughs> you can see it's exactly the same skills what you need for doing lessons with the mountain bike. Except this one, sport competence. Sport competence, we need to work out exact, uh, actually for, this, for the mountain biking. To cover this competence, in biking, we install a collaboration with Swiss Cycling, which is the umbrella association of cycling in Switzerland, to get required knowledge. Now, we can see, actually, it's a match for our instructors. I think not only the skills from the instructors are matching, I guess, the two sports have similarities. Same target group and clients. The needs are also more comparable in hard fun. The sport is very similar. True speed, biomechanic, movements, move your center of mass on the right time at the right uh, point. It's the same. If you do it wrong, then it hurts. That's the same. <laughs> so we perform in nature, on the mountains, and with like-minded people. That's what we love. These were a few facts about the daily business and how we operate in the Swiss ski school all year round. Alex will tell you the next steps and visions. Thanks, Kili. So now we've been talking a lot about the ski schools and the instructors. 
But as an umbrella association, Swiss Snow Sports is also in, uh, affected by these things. So what could be um, the effect for Swiss Snow Sports? Because a big part of the business of Swiss Snow Sports is actually in the educational department as well. So we've been asked the last couple of days, why do we wear red jacket and blue jackets? So that's a bit confusing for some of you. Um, it's also confusing for us, <laughs> but <laughs> there is a simple reason. So on one hand, we have the red jacket, which stands for the Swiss ski schools. So we have 151, like you said before, 151 licensed Swiss ski schools, and they're mostly skiing in red. And then on the other side, we have the educational part, where we educate actually the most of the instructors or all of the instructors for the Swiss ski schools, but also for the private schools. So that for we need to be a little bit more neutral. And that's why we have this blue color. Being neutral, it's a Swiss thing and it's really important. <laughs> so one of the impacts is uh, Kili already said, so we installed a collaboration with Swiss Cycling and we do a bike course for our ski instructors. But how does it look like in the future? It is difficult to tell because we are quite in the beginning of this. But it could be that we need to find a system together with other sports that we will get easier to accept each other's certifications. So maybe we are able to find a system where we can merge, for example, pedagogy or mythological aspects. And then on top of this basic instruction, we're going to build the specialization in our own disciplines in snow sports. So this could be a little bit our vision um, for Swiss snow sports on the educational stuff. But we need to be, I think, flexible. We need to listen to the needs of the schools and also of our instructors. Maybe in the future we have an outdoor guide or a nature guide or an all-in-one activity guide. So that's maybe the goal we are aiming for. But we are in the beginning right now. That's why it's still called a vision. So we come now to an end. I look on the watch, yeah, three minutes. I have to talk really slow on the last slide. <laughs> no, so we come to the end of our presentation. We hope that we could give you an idea, a rough idea, how we see the future with Swiss Snow Sports, with our instructors, but also in the industry in general in Switzerland. If there are questions, we are more than happy to answer them. We wish you a very great interski. Share your passion to the max. Take the advantage of this event and exchange as much as you can. If you would like to follow Swiss Snow Sports and the Swiss Snow Demo Team on the journey here in, at the Interski, you can get more information and facts and content over the QR code over there. All right, thank you. So that was the easy part. Do you have questions? <laughs> Please. Hi, and thanks for, for, for your interesting uh, session. Uh, I'm working partly with uh, endurance business and, and with endurance sports. And therefore, I'm asking, how do you see trail running as part of maybe summer activities or autumn. And, and especially I'm asking this because quite many adults, maybe adults with a good income, like to go there. And it's also, also to have highlights in the mountains, in the fells, in the nature. So I understand that not every ski instructor does, does have the good enough fit for that, but you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, we're out. I mean, 150, <laughs> you need to have six or five or three or whatever. So is there any point? Yeah, I think like in general, nature offers everything in Switzerland to, to make that, to make trail running. But like you said, you need instructors in your ski school who are fit enough to, 
to fulfill the needs of these, um, of these people. But there is a market for that, but I don't know if there is a product yet in some of the schools. But, 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 this, but there, are, there are already some um, offers which you can book trail running guides and it's more from sports shops or hotels and maybe it makes sense to get a collaboration with them and do something uh, like that. I, I was also thinking in the winter like the ski mountaineering because if you go up and down, it's pretty much the same, only with snow or without snow. Yeah, that we offer already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like randonnée and off-piste, like in general, that's uh, like... Um, it's like a pair. Yeah, but like that's a market already and, and we work on that, yeah. Other questions? Uh, hello, thanks for the presentation. Would you look to uh, maybe rebrand yourself as Swiss Mountain School? Like, I don't see that at the moment, but like the ski schools in the destinations, they already rebranded themselves some in, in some of the um, resorts so that they are not anymore snow sports school. So, um, for example, in Lenk, uh, they are, like, what's the name of, of the ski school in Lenk? Sports and event. Events, okay. yeah. yeah, exactly. So they rebranded that. But that's, I mean, it's not the umbrella association which needs to tell to the school what their name is, but the, the schools there are free to change that. Other questions? Okay. I have one question. Yeah, please. Do you already see a chain, an increase in fully year employed instructors, for instance, in Switzerland? How has the project succeeded? I have no numbers, but um, I can tell you that our uh, ski school, we have a road park, we have a bike school, and we have about 20 all year round um, guides or instructors who works. And before that, like before COVID, um, we had about three, one um, CEO, administration, and then a second one who worked like 50%. So now the, the, this increase, it, it's um, a big impact for us. Of course, COVID helped us a little bit because um, our Swiss guys, they made holidays in our own country, and this helped us to, to build up this um, platform. Yeah. That was huge. These, the, the COVID summers were huge in the Swiss mountains because Swiss people generally, they love to go to the beaches normally, and they couldn't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I mean, that's a great increase. So let's hope at the next Interski, when you ask the same question, there will be lots of hands raised. So Hopefully, yeah. thanks, Alex. Thanks, Kili, for magic moments, learning success, safety, and fun. Thank you. Thank you. Was there a question still? Sorry for the late question. Um, um, it's really interesting to hear what you guys are doing. Um, in Canada, we do some similar things. Uh, I'm from Whistler, and we have a, a big, big bike park. Um, <laughs> um, my question is, uh, are you also targeting uh, the, sh the shoulder season? Uh, for instance, us in Whistler, uh, the fall is really uh, dead. We have uh, maybe uh, 45 days that there's no mountain and no sightseeing whatsoever. Um, we have a, the, the, sea, the winter is overlapping with the, 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 the bike park. Um, are you have a, a plan to address uh, those shoulder season? I don't know if I got the question right, because <clears throat> it's, um, it was a bit... Sorry, um, the, the shoulder season, so in between summer and winter, are you uh, having, do you have a plan to target um, some, some work for your, your, your snow sport pros and, and so on? 
Yeah, after the season, normally, or after the winter season, a lot of the instructors, they love to go and like, the holiday. Uh, yeah, do vacation and, and relax and yeah, sit at the beach or whatever. But um, because also the, the cable car companies, they are closing or shutting down for some of the, of the, some periods of the year. So we have to um, be aware of that as well. But that's very individual. So, for example, in, uh, in uh, Engelberg, where Kili yeah. is, is working, they operate 365 days a year, so he could offer yeah. things. So, um, now we finish our winter season approximately beginning of, of May and starts our bike season beginning of May. So, there is no more time between. And you have to de develop the, the products like before, so there is no time to make holidays, actually. <laughs> but um, no, actually, oh. in, 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 in Engelberg, it's, it's full from winter to summer, from summer to winter, straight. Thank you. No more questions? So let's go for a beer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Great. Stand. 